no way. No. Shh. Well, that's it. No, 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 no. Whilst the rest of Newcastle-upon-Tyne reverberates to the flurry of 21st century life, the city's castle keep stands still and almost silent. But Most Haunted's investigation of this 800-year-old building is just the latest disturbance reported here, with many of the castle's rooms reputedly a centre for paranormal activity. One such area is the mezzanine chamber, where oppressive nausea and ghostly apparitions continually astound the unsuspecting. And are you picking anything up in this particular area? I am, and I'm actually picking up tears. I actually feel a little bit tearful myself. Um, it also feels... <clears throat> it's making me nauseous, it makes me feel sick. And when I get that extreme of, of that sensation, it means you know, vile death, garroting and hanging and all, all those sorts of things. In this room? No, it doesn't, it, it doesn't feel as if it was in this room. It feels this is a, there's an air of expectancy in this room, so it's more likely to be in a dungeon or a cell or something where there, there is that air of tomorrow this is going to happen. Yeah, you know? what's going to happen to yeah, me? Yeah, absolutely. So is there any particular spirit that's, that's grounded? It's going I had that. Well, it was surely one of us tapping a feet, was that no. first? Well, it sounded from behind me, but was, again, it's yeah, very difficult it to pinpoint. It sounded to me like it was over there. I, I, I and it was certainly not a view lock, because I could see all your feet. It's interesting. There's... Sorry. Yeah. You're on. I just heard something like... A little whisper. I had a whisper as well. Yeah. And I had a bad Yeah. Is there anyone up there? Shall I get up there? Seem to there it is again. Listen. Shall I go up to the stairs just to see if there's anyone there? Shall I? Shall I let me go to the top yeah. of the stairs? Yeah. Other than those present either in front or behind the camera, no other crew members were on site at this time. Carl and Louis' inspection upstairs discovered what we initially suspected, a secure and empty building. And once both men had returned, another point of interest was to arise. So you're, you're picking up on a man? A male figure, he seems to, just what Carl's done, he seems to walk from midway down and down here and then turn here and go in here. This is a doorway that once linked the mezzanine chamber to the garrison room. And although this connection has long since been bricked up, David was able to find this link, as well as hint at Castle Keep's ceremonial past. Um, I think it would have come through over here. It's probably bricked up now. I think it's here, that space there. What? Don't point to it. It seems like, it, you know, I know this is marked out in red, but it feels, because that could easily be a window, but it feels like it's, it's this area here. The phrase I've got in my head is like, kings are made and kings are broken, and, you know, that kind of mm. sensation to it. Um, this whispering in this room as well, which whispering is always a sign for me of um, politicking, of statesmanship. Yeah. What was that? Yeah. Politicking, of statesmanship. Yeah. What was that? Yeah. Politicking, of statesmanship. Yeah. What was that? Yeah. It's a, it's a band outside. It is a band. It's a marching band outside. Just as I'm saying, states occasions. Yeah. <laughs> it stopped. Oh my! That has to be something outside. So it's got to be something outside. Something outside. To say we were intrigued would be an understatement, and with Carl seeing no visible source for our sudden musical interruption, we were left to openly question who or what had been responsible. I'm lost for words. That was mad. Why have we heard that? 
it, let's say if it is paranormal, why have we heard that? Well, it's it's obvious if you've got to if you've got to go on it, it's obviously at some point, and I'm sure it's true. This was a garrison. Um, at some point around these walls, there would have been soldiers camped out. They would have set off from here. They would have come in here. I was talking about ceremonies and kings being made yes. and kings being destroyed. If you're executing a king, you don't just take him to a little quiet room and you do the big number. And from a skeptic's point of view, did you hear the noise of the marching band outside? I didn't hear the noise. You guys all reacted very strongly to but it. But if so. you had have heard it from a skeptic's point of view, what would you put that down to? I just don't know. I mean, skeptics don't have the answers. I can't necessarily give you an answer. Okay. So, with prisoners of crime and politics, including those of blue blood, thought to still roam here, we decide to show David one more room, an area that, unbeknown to him, once held those facing their darkest hours. I have a sense of a man in the corner, and he's kneeling and praying. He's praying, for, essentially, for his life. He seems specifically to be here, though, because he's been taken from here and, and murdered, or, or executed is probably a better word. Right? Is this your political prisoner? David? It could be a political prisoner, and th there is a crown above his head, so I don't know if any, any is that kings have been taken from a, here. a political prisoner? Because yeah, he's got the, there, there's the like a, it's, not, it's like it's hovering above his head in my, in my vision. This is land that once switched between English and Scottish rule. So did this historic but hostile battle for power see traitors imprisoned here? And with one Scot having sampled life in Castle Keep, we then invited spiritualist medium Gordon Smith to sample this grand design. I mean, this place really gets me here. I'm surrounded by people. Right. I get the sense of one soul being surrounded by others. It's just. Is there one particular soul that stands out yeah, among the yeah. others? Yeah, it's a youngish female. A young woman, I'd say, rather than a child. Uh, I don't feel her manacled or chained up or anything like that, but I do know that she's in here, and there's such a feeling of sadness. It's almost defeatist. There's a sense of a connection between the two rooms. I mean, I, I want to walk through there. It's like just this horrid, horrid feeling. Anybody who would sense this and had no real sort of psychic awareness would be terrifying. Yeah. People would see... I heard something. It was like a door banging. Yeah. Sound is the phenomena of this place. Absolutely, it is sound. Interestingly, the Scottish blood that runs through both of our mediums took an instant disliking to an area where more than one Scotsman is known to have suffered. And once more, we had encountered a mystifying amount of auditory phenomena. A few of us had already been privy to the torturous tales that exist within the fabric of this former county jail. But would any of the garrison's room's morose memories transfer into Gordon's psyche? Where would you think the, the door, you know, the other room, that mm. we're, where do you think that would have been the connecting door? I'm kind of drawn over here. And Gordon, do you feel that, I mean, psychically? Because obviously there's, there's brickwork there, which is different from the stonework. Yeah. And, and so, you know, skeptically, I, I, that, you, know, you might be drawn to that psychologically. Skeptically, I could have been drawn to that yeah. psychological. That but was you the first place I walked. Yeah. I mean, even as Yvette said, where do you feel I was being pulled in that direction? And again, everything I'm feeling down here is all in my gut, mm. which tells me it's a very dense, heavy energy. Mm. It's, it's almost as if this one woman stands out in a crowd, but it's like a pack of dogs. Surrounding it, the people. It's like what they want. Converging on her. There's, there's certainly something that's befell this young woman that is pretty horrific. So far, a predominantly heavy and uncomfortable air has followed both of our psychics around this building. However, one small and enclosed area was about to offer Gordon a little light relief to lift Castle Keep's dark mood. I feel this is more spiritual up here. It's almost like hearing hymns and. There's, there's something in prayer and, right, and people okay. in their, their robes and whatnot. I, I just feel as though there's an essence of, as it goes higher up, it's clearing and clearing and clearing. It's almost like that's the first sign of cleansing or that there's, there's light getting into the place. Okay. And I don't mean bright light, I mean just some kind of spiritual light. Okay. Okay. Given the rich history associated with a castle situated in border country, it is no surprise that so many of the memories still held here are of a belligerent nature. 
Prisoners of the Anglo-Scottish War were often held here, as were latter-day criminals who often found themselves chained to their cell walls. But by contrast, those who were condemned to death often turned to their faith, despite knowing that their fate in this world was already sealed. Nightfall signalled our intentions to discover more of Castle Keep's